This workshop and webinar is for people who identify as testers but are new to Postman. We're going to cover everything you need to know for testing, um, ways to test, and we're going to show you a agenda in just in in just a moment. But let's go ahead and get started by introducing ourselves. My name is Buja Mystery. I've been at Postman for about six months now as a developer advocate. Um, I've worked as a developer advocate for a few years now, and I'm really excited to encourage people to do some of their best work uh, using some amazing tools. Also, previously in my um, past uh, career, uh, I have also been um, a automation test engineer and I worked heavily with Postman to convert a lot of manual API tests into automation tests. So this is kind of up my alley and I'm really excited to be sharing this session with you all today. Yeah. Hi everyone. I'm Carson Hunter. I'm a technical enablement architect here at Postman. I've been with Postman for a little over a year. Um, similar to Pooja, before this, I was a back-end developer and I also did some testing with Postman, uh, something I really enjoy. So I'm excited to help you all kind of jumpstart on your Postman testing journey. Awesome. So yeah, I think um, we are looking at the agenda today. So for the sake of today's talk, um, we want to first welcome any of you who identify as testers. Um, we've shared like an internal statistic um, and it's a survey that we've noticed that over 15% of our users are testers. And this is where Postman got its start. So we're very happy to be doing this session today. So today we're going to make a little bit of assumptions on your skill level. We're going to start from a place that um, where everyone kind of knows what software testing is at at least a high level. Um, and we are going to base that off of some understanding where we're going to use terms such as like ex expectations, assertions. So essentially in today's agenda, we're going to be covering um, these five, four, five different topics. So we'll be diving into what API testing is. Um, we'll be using a web interface for Postman, but we also have a desktop client um, that you can download as well. Uh, we are going to introduce different kinds of testing in Postman, which includes unit testing, end-to-end -end testing, uh, API contract testing. Uh, we'll show a little bit of automation testing as well, um, using some really great tools. And we will also dive a little bit deeper into gRPC testing as well in this, in this session. So um, we will also talk about writing some custom tests. Um, so all of the test codes, code that we'll be writing will be written in JavaScript. Um, and we'll be talk about different advanced use cases for some more complex testing, such as API contract testing. And then finally, we'll love to share some resources and um, my colleagues Debo and Kevin and I that are also in the chat will be helping answer any Q&A that you all have might have going forward. So if you have any questions, please type your questions in the Q&A section that should be at the bottom of the screen and we'll have um, our friends help us out with uh, answering questions. All right. So we're going to start with a little bit about you. Um, I know that we weren't able to get a little bit of a poll up, but um, I would love to encourage everyone from in the chat to kind of give us a little bit of an understanding of what kind of roles you might have if you are testers, developers, um, product managers, or um, how, if, how much experience you might have with testing. So we'd love to kind of get a little bit of an understanding of your experience. Um, and then maybe also how much you've worked with Postman, whether that's uh, you've worked heavily with Postman or um, you're brand new to Postman. So with that, we can kind of get, get a little bit of a gauge in, in, uh, in your experience. So yeah, it looks like we have testers that have been testing for 30 years, people who have over 10 years of experience, some people who are brand new learning Postman right now. 
And so it's amazing to see that we have like a variety of um, people with um, a variety of backgrounds here. And it looks like we have a robotics QA engineer um, that's joining. Uh, so yeah, it's amazing to see such a, such a wide variety. So today's session is kind of, it's pretty, um, rudimentary in in the world of testing but we hope that we can share with you some interesting things that you might have not uh, experienced with postman so with that said um i wanted to hand it off to carson to talk a little bit more about our learning objectives today yeah thanks Pooja. so we're hoping that by the end of the session you'll be able to do the following things and you know discuss them and share them with your team so i uh, will look at sending a request and inspecting a response since this is more of an introductory se session, we'll um, kind of go over the basics of the Postman UI so that you're comfortable, you know, using Postman workspaces and collections in general. We'll use test snippets and write our own custom test code. We'll work on extracting data from one request and use it in another request using uh, variables. We'll save and run requests and uh, tests in collections so we can run them manually and run them uh, in a more automated way. And then we'll look at different kinds of tests that can be written in Postman. So we'll be diving in into what is API testing. So um, what is API testing? Um, and we're going to break this down into three specific areas, um, starting off with unit testing, um, then end-to-end -end testing. Uh, we'll show off some automation using uh, Collection Runner and Postman CLI, which is brand new feature in uh, our latest version of Postman, which is V10. And we'll finish off with some contract API contract testing. So, as many of you know, um, uh, people in this in this in this session seem to have like a very variety background with testing. But I think we can all agree on that there are a lot of ways to test an API. And although in today's one hour session we won't have time to go through all of them, we're going to focus on um, basically these three at a relatively introductory level. So unit testing has different meanings and a way to define the term to people in the industry. Um, um, and in this workshop, we're going to explore basically um, testing, unit testing as a way to test a single endpoint. So, and once we test its single endpoint and its response, uh, we can kind of test whether we get what is expected um, in various different circumstances. So some examples of this can include like testing for status codes, testing for headers, response times, um, testing for different um, uh, data that might be, be we're interested in that's in the body, uh, response body. Um, and then End-to-end -end testing is a little bit more advanced workflow where basically you might suspect from its name, it's going to test a bigger process using APIs where we might consume many portions or many units of an API or test an entire workflow um, from one API to the next. So in some uh, ways, this can somewhat, um, uh, ways this can be called integration testing. But with end-to-end -end testing, we're going to want to write tests to make sure that um, each API is behaving the way that we want. That way we can, um, after one API, uh, uh, we get the right data from one API, we can test that um, it's affecting the next API um, uh, successfully. And finally, contract testing is, allows us to test the contract of an API. So when we think about contracts in the real world, um, it's generally a document that is agreed upon by different parties and um, developers negotiate what is uh, what they're expecting in that contract. So today we'll kind of dive a little bit into contract testing when it comes to validating an API schema. And uh, we have a lot more resources to share with you on that as well. So uh, I wanted to hand it off to Carson to show you how we can get started by copying over the learning material for today. Yeah, thanks, Pooja. So uh, we're about to head into Postman. So if you want to go ahead and pull that up, if you want to follow along, that'd be great. Before we do, I wanted to go over some terminology in case you're new to Postman. So 
Today we're going to be talking about workspaces and collections. So in Postman, a workspace is kind of like the filing cabinet where you have lots of work stored. You know, you can't copy an entire workspace, but this is where you invite your teammates in to, um, you know, work on different aspects of your API, of your collections. And then when we talk about a collection, this is kind of a grouping of API requests. Uh, it's kind of like a drawer in that filing cabinet where you can organize your specific work. So you can make a copy of your collection within the workspace. You could make a copy to a different workspace. Today, we're actually going to be forking. So you might be familiar with this term if you've used Git or a version control system. This is kind of where you make a copy that's related to the original copy. So the advantages of this is that, you know, when you fork our version, um, you have your own version where you have full control over it. Um, and then if we make a change to our collection, you'll be notified and you can pull those changes into your collection. And then in theory, if you wanted to make a pull request back, you know, you could easily kind of make some changes and merge them into ours as well. So um, I'm going to switch over to Postman and we'll start on our homepage. Um, if you already have a workspace that you want to use for this, you're welcome to use that and you could go ahead and select it from um, the drop down here. We're going to walk through creating a workspace. I'll call this intergalactic testing. It's a hard word to spell. And then you want to give your uh, workspace a nice summary so your teammates know what's going on. Um, I'll just title this webinar for now. We can go back and make it more verbose later. Um, you'll see we have some options for vis visibility here. If you're the only one working on this, you're welcome to make it a personal workspace. Um, and then you could invite your teammates later. I'm going to leave this as a team workspace so that Pooja and I can collaborate in real time and we can both work on the resources that we'll have today and then you know later if you're really proud of this you can make it a public workspace but we're not quite ready to do that yet so we'll create a workspace and this takes us into our new workspace i'm going to go ahead and add Pooja um so she can collaborate with us as well Let's see if i can find her okay perfect i'm going to add her as an admin so that she's able to you know, modify and add um, other elements here as well. So we've got a blank workspace. I'm going to actually go and find our Space Camp collection that we'll be working today. Hopefully someone can put that in the chat, but if you, you know, after the webinar, if you want to find this, you can search for uh, the Space Camp workspace. You can see that this is public by the globe icon and it was created by Postman. So, you know, this is the official one. We'll click on that. Then here you can see kind of all the resources for the past uh, Postman Space Camp Intergalactic webinars. Um, we're going to be using this Postman and Introduction for Testers collection today. So from here, you can go ahead and fork this. Um, you know, I'll name it a webinar. It's good to you know give it a descriptive name so that if you end up with multiple forks, you know what's going on in each fork. Um, it's already selected my intergalactic testing workspace that I just created, which is what I want. You could select a different one here as well. And I'm going to leave this checked. What this uh, watch checkbox is doing is, you know, if Pooja or I make a change to this collection down the road, you'll get a little notification um, that you're able to pull in the different changes so you can stay up to date with the latest uh, content. So I'll go ahead and port this. And now you can see we've got our own copy of the introduction to testing um, collection here. And so a quick rundown of what's going on in this workspace. On the left-hand side, we've got our different Postman elements. We're gonna stay in this collections tab today. We've got APIs. Um, another one of interest is environments. This is where you can set up um, you know, different groupings of variables. If you wanted to say have specific variables for your testing environment, for your you know, production server to easily be able to switch between those. Um, we're not gonna really touch on any of these other elements today, um, but good to know that they're there. And then now that we're on kind of the collection overview, you can see um, we've got the fork icon, we've got the ability to watch, and then over here on the right-hand side, we've got some icons, we've got documentation, we can comment, we can look at past pull requests as well as history. Um, so Pooja, there's a lot of kind of icons here. When you're getting started with a new collection and a new workspace, what's your favorite place to start at? Yeah, so um, 
Whenever we fork a collection into a workspace, especially if I'm forking it from somewhere else, one of the first places that I'd like to go and take a look at is the documentation. Um, and I think the documentation definitely tells a lot about what exactly is going on in that workspace. So if I take a look at, um, you know, the postman, um, in this case, the, the collection level, uh, um, I can take a look right here on the right and I can click on view complete collection level documentation. And I can kind of take a look at exactly what is happening in this entire collection. I can see that my folders are listed on the um, right hand side and I can kind of get a little bit of more interesting um, ideas about the resources and different reference libraries here. Um, so we're, let's dive a little bit deeper into this collection. So um, here we are going to take a look at the API reference library folder. So the API reference library folder um, essentially um, uh, is a folder that has a list of different um, uh, you know, different endpoints here. So we have um, documentation for this library folder. We can see what's in this folder. Um, we can take a look at our one of the requests that's available in this folder. So here you might be interested in taking a look at what this request looks like. Um, here we have all the different request methods, such as, um, uh, you know, the uh, get methods and yeah i'm happy to go a little bit slower uh yeah sure so um in the api reference library folder we have the various different request methods um you can change your methods here um whether that's get or post or put so in this case we have a get request we have the url so in this case we have this URL that is actually encapsulated by a variable. So if I hover over this variable, I can see that my URL is set as a collection variable. So I can see what my scope is. Um, and I can look at like that, I have that slash endpoint books. I can see that I can set all my parameters here. I can set my headers here. I can set my authorization as well, and in this case, this authorize um, this has been authorized authorized by its parent folder. Um, and then, if this was a post request, I could take a look at a body, um, and we'll be writing our tests either in the pre request or the test request tab. So. Just diving a little bit deeper into some of these variables. So, for example, at a collection level, the collection level is the topmost folder. So, here um, we can take a look at some of the variables that are available here. So, when you set a collection variable, you're basically setting a variable at the topmost level. And this variable can be used, utilized throughout your entire folder, essentially. So you can also set um, collection level tests, and you can also set collection level authorization as well. So this is really useful, especially if you're writing your tests um, um, uh, throughout your entire folder, you want uh, authorization to be utilized throughout, as well as if you wanted to have variables that are utilized throughout. And you can see that we've done that here. Um, with these curly braces um, on that base URL variable. So let me go ahead and send this first request just so we can take a little bit of a look, closer look at their uh, response. So when I get this endpoint, I can see what my body looks like. I can see um, this in a uh, pretty JSON format. I can also see um, my output, which is a status code of 200 OK. I can take a look a little bit closer at you know um, how long this event took uh, might have taken place. I can also save responses. Like, for example, I can save this as an example, which lets me save that um, response output as an example if I wanted to refer that back to that later. 
or if I wanted to use that example for something else. Um, I can see this text in raw as well and also preview it in, in different formats. And if I had a visualizer set up, I can also visualize this text here as well. So this is kind of like the entire anatomy of um, a Postman request. You have a lot of different parts that you can control, which are like, of course, like the URLs, the params, um, the headers, the bodies. So let's dive a little bit deeper in um, kind of like uh, writing one of our first tests. So I know that everyone's here to learn testing. So Carson, how about we dive right in and get started with writing our first tests? Yeah, onto the exciting part. So Pooja mentioned we have our pre-request script and our test uh, tab where we'll be writing most of our code. And one thing I wanted to point out before we do start you know, writing code is a really handy feature that Postman has called this test snippets. So on the right-hand side, we have this pane where if you scroll, you can see there's a lot of common Postman operations that you'll need to do. So we've talked about variables. There's um, kind of preset snippets for getting and setting variables. And as soon as you click them, you know, they'll be inserted into your sandbox. We scroll down you can see uh, we've got different examples of different tests so kind of some pre-written tests and you know you're able to use these as is you're able to modify them to you know accomplish whatever you need to they're a good kind of skeleton for outlining some of the syntax um and, you know we've got some more uh, specialized one like converting xml to json here as well so just good to know that these are there especially as you're learning kind of the postman syntax and how things work um definitely don't be afraid to rely on those so as we start out let's go to one of my most used uh, test snippets which is the status code of 200. so this is checking that we're getting a 200 response from our status um and that everything is coming back okay and if you look at this uh, syntax, Postman uses kind of a built-in testing library called Chai. Um, if someone could put the link to that library uh, reference in the chat, this is a good link to have to you know, reference later to learn a little bit more about what's going on and the different operations that you can do. So highly encourage maybe saving that for later. Um, so a lot of testing in Postman is going to use behavior-driven development. This is what the end user sees, but today we'll mostly be writing tests after we run the requests. Um, so another thing to be aware of as you're writing tests and debugging your data is Postman also has a built-in console. So I'll go ahead and open this up. Um, and so configure all my windows. If you start writing, we've got a nice autocomplete feature here. And as we console log, you know, we could write the classic hello. Um, and if we send this, you'll see it show up in your console. You know, you can send data here as well to kind of see what's going on in your different objects to make sure, you know, things are coming back as expected as you're building out your tests and your different logic. So definitely a good thing to have in your arsenal as you're writing and debugging tests. And so one other thing is that, you know, once we write tests, we obviously want to see them passing, but if you have a passing test, you should know how to make it fail. So just to kind of give an idea of how that works, um, we know this is giving back a 200. So if we change this to say that we are getting back a 400, this should fail. So, you know, we don't like to see failing tests, but it's good to know that they can fail. Uh, so here you can see we've got a status code of 400, which is the wrong assertion that kind of gives us some um, information on what's going on there. So I'll revert those changes. Um, we've gone over kind of how to use the snippets to get started quickly and how to modify some of that JSON code um, a little bit. But let's hand it over to Pooja to dive a little bit deeper into how to make these uh, even more custom. Yeah, awesome. So thanks for sharing like some of the most basic tests. Um, writing custom tests is actually, oh, you can, you know, the best way to write custom tests is also to manipulate some of the snippets that we already have already. Um, so one of the custom tests that I was interested in getting um, you to write um, getting to write here is a test that kind of shows that successful um, 
uh, response. And before we do that, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into some elements that we have here. So here we have PM. So PM is the Postman object, and it has access to our Postman application and all the Postman API methods. Um, and then here we have that dot test, which allows you to build that test. So essentially, this lets you test um, and build that test different outputs. So let's um, show an example if we have multiple expectations within the same test. So here I wanted to show you an example where we could um, test, um, let's say we wanted to do a, uh, let me get rid of that one. Um, so here I am interested in testing Um, that a status code has a successful post request. And of course, this is a get request. So we're actually expecting um, it to be 200. And uh, we also have a few um, post requests in this folder as well. So we'll take a look at um, that. So if I were to run this test right here, so let's just call this test um, uh, successful request test. And if I run this test, I should see that test is able to pass. I can also add a couple of different elements in this as well. So I can create a test here that checks that the response um, is uh, has a, uh, a body. So there's a test in here called to be with body. And then I can also test that this is, um, has the response is a JSON. So um, I can test to be a uh, JSON. So you can test a couple of different aspects. So this way I'm checking that a body is there and the body is a JSON format. So now that I have that successful test, um, if I wanted to test this across my entire folder, I can, I can actually make this test a collection level test. So if I click and create this, uh, put this test in a collection level, I can, if I, see what that looks like. And if I save that, um, I can take a little bit when I run that test here, now that I've deleted that and send that request, you can see that two, requ uh, two tests have happened. So basically the collection level test has happened first. So it's testing that um, you know, that the response is successful. It's a JSON response. It has some sort of body and it's also testing like a status code. So that way, you know, you can kind of see that you can create um, tests at multiple different levels. So that's a pretty basic test, but one of the most interesting things and I think useful things when it comes to Postman um, is oftentimes when it comes to working with REST APIs, you might want to parse some of the data that you're getting back from the body. So one way to parse that data is to create, um, there's a way to basically uh, parse that um, uh, JSON response. So let's try to build an example where we can uh, validate for this genre is uh, include some sort of fiction um, string. So for example, if I were to create a variable here and call it genre, and I can use PM dot response dot uh, JSON, and then I can uh, basically parse that first element in that array, which is element zero, and I can parse for um, uh, basically genre, which is a field in that element. So if I take a look at what that looks like, just if I were to console.log that, Right. 
Um, and if I save that and send that request, I should be able to see that I can get that data back. Now, if I wanted to create a test based off of that, um, I can create a uh, test in here that um, pretty similar to the test snippet. Um, so right here. Uh, so like, for example, if I wanted to expect that, um, that data back, I can expect that the genre is one of the arrays of, let's say, fiction. And I can change that, um, uh, you know, that uh, test, uh, what we call that test. So genre is plus. So of what? what we expect so that way you can see that you can also validate a little bit of of the um any of the things that you might be interested in the body so this kind of gives you a little bit of a way to kind of like take a look at converting a snippet into some sort of javascript um logic that you might be interested in and you you know this is just scratching the surface there's so much you can do um you can also send multiple requests in in here you can create objects um you can save um some of this into uh some of this data into variables. And we're going to kind of take a little bit of look at what that looks like in our next workflow, which involves end-to-end -end testing. But if you're interested in just learning how to script and learning um, how to work with variables, we'll, we'll be happy to post some of that data in the chat. So let me hand it off to you, Carson, and let's build that end-to-end -end workflow. Yeah. So we've been playing around with some manual testing, you know, we focused on one request at a time, building out tests and kind of sending that when we want to. But now, you know, we're running a library, we're adding a lot of books, we kind of have to automate this to save ourselves some time. So we have this new book workflow and what's going on here is we're first going to add a book and then we're going to get all of our books to make sure it was added, added successfully. And then we're gonna update the book to um, check it out of our library, just to make sure the whole workflow works. So if we head into this first post request, you can see we've got a post operation. And if we go into the body, we're kind of manually typed out that we're um, creating the book Dune. We've got some information about it. And so we are gonna be writing several tests about this specific book. Um, and so what we can do is we can extract this title out into a variable to make it reusable. So um, if you surround this with curly brackets and then type in what you want the name of the variable to be, um, it kind of automatically creates that postman variable syntax. And so, you know, for the book Dune, it doesn't matter as much since it's not, you know, a really long title that we're prone to typos with, but it is good to kind of have that reusable um, just in general. And so you want to make sure that your um, postman variable is inside these quotation marks when you're sending it in a body just so that syntax all works out. And so we've created the variable syntax, but we haven't assigned a variable to it. So I'm going to go ahead and go in the pre-request script so that before we send this request, we can make sure that there's a variable there to send. So I'll go into my test snippets and see if I can find set a collection variable. So this is going to take two um, kind of parameters. So the first one is going to be whatever we want our variable to be named. We already named it book title. And then um, we took out the value of Dune. And so we want our book to be named Dune. So that's the value we'll apply to this variable. And so before we send this, let's take a shot at writing some tests. Um, and one thing that Pooja showed earlier that's really helpful when you're writing tests, you know, maybe against an API you're not as familiar with, if it's a really well-documented collection, you're going to have some of these saved examples. And so this is an example of what's going to come back from your API. So if we get a successful request, we'll hopefully get a property called message with a value of OK. So using that information, let's go in, um, see if we can find that JSON value check um, snippet and modify it to what we need. So we'll say that book was added successfully, you can see we're getting our JSON data and we don't want this value property. We want it to be message like we just saw. And we saw that the ideal value would be okay. So if we send this, 
Awesome. So you can see we've got two test results. We've got our successful request, which is the one we put at the uh, collection level. So that's going to run anytime we run, you know, one of our specific requests. And then um, our book was added successfully. So we got that OK response. And um, since we set that collection variable, let's just make sure that this was uh, set successfully. So here at the collection level, we have a variable called book title that's set to Dune just like we wanted. Awesome. So now, um, even though our post request was successful, let's get back all the books in our library and just kind of make sure uh, we see it in there. So let's see. In our test, we're going to want, to, we know we're going to want to get our book title. So we'll go ahead and find get a collection variable. We want to get book title and we'll assign that out to a variable called our book. And so once again, you know, I don't quite remember what's supposed to come back from this. So we'll check our reference here. So we should be getting back an array and each object in it is a book. And so we're searching for this title. So we want the first object in the array and the title of that first object. So if we go back into our books, let's see. So we can go and do, let's look for, um, response body contains a string. So what this is going to do is um, search the whole uh, response body for any text that matches this string. So we'll take out this string and write our book and this will get our book title. And then we will change the title to something that means a little bit more to us. So we'll say found our book and then we'll add in our book title. And then, um, you know, ideally, uh, when you're posting to an API, you might get the ID back um, of the object you just created. That's not the case with this API. So we are going to have to kind of assume that the first book we get back is the book that we added. Um, and we want to kind of save that ID of our book so that we can check it out later. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to set a collection variable. And we're going to... Um, once again, get our response body as JSON. So response, this right. Uh, oh. We're actually going to set this as an ID. Yeah. Since we want our variable to be named ID, and then we'll um, set it to the value that we want, which is PM response dot JSON. We're getting that first element of the array, and we're getting the ID of that first element. So we'll yeah. send this. Carson, do you want to show them just uh, one more time where those IDs are found? Um, so so yeah. we go back. Remember, we have an array. We're getting kind of this first element, ideally. And we've already saved the title, but now I want to save this ID field, which is on the mm -hmm. same level as the title. Um, so that's what we're aiming to do. So we'll go ahead and send this. So that way we're getting the ID back for that one single book that we're interested in. Exactly. So it looks like we found our book, Dune, and we'll make sure that that ID was kind of saved um, in this next request, which is update book. You can see here we're sending a patch request, which is kind of update some of the information on that book. And we have this colon ID syntax. And what this does is it creates a path variable for us. If we hover over this ID variable, we can see it's at the collection level and we do have a value saved for the ID, which is what we wanted. Yep. So yeah, go ahead, Pooja. Yeah, so like if we take a look back at our collection level, I know we've worked with like collection set and get. So when we do that, you can definitely see that up there in our collection level variables when we set and get certain variables. So that's a script that allows you to automatically set and get and retrieve variables um, in that in that workflow way. So that's a really great useful um, script when it comes to testing. Exactly. And if you want to do this in a more manual way, you could, you know, click in here, type your variable name and set a value yourself. Uh, we've just been doing it through script. So a couple ways to do that. And so we're going to update the book. Let's once again, um, take a look at what this is supposed to return just so we know what to expect. Here, we're once again expecting a message of OK if we update the book successfully. One nice thing here is we've got a couple of errors documented, which is great practice. 
um, so people can know what they're getting back if they don't do it successfully. Uh, great for front end developers who are, you know, have to accommodate all of these error types. So if we get a 404 or a 500, we know what we're getting back. But here we're hoping for a 200. And here in the body, we're sending um, just a property. We're changing that from false to true. And so um, what we want to do here is we should, we just want to save that ID. Let's see. I think we're just making sure that the JSON comes back as okay. Right. Yeah. We just want yeah. to do that same JSON response check. Mm -hmm. So book checked out successfully will be what we're aiming to do. And then JSON value, once again, we're looking for that message mm -hmm. to equal. Okay. Awesome. And so after we do this, assuming this is all okay, we do want to kind of unset those values that we checked. So every time we run it, we're not kind of keeping those variables around. So if we scroll up here, there's a snippet to clear a collection variable. So we can unset our book title and we can do the same thing for and our collection variables have been unset. So this is perfect. So we've gone through and kind of defined everything we want to do in our collection run. And now uh, let's get to the part where we're actually saving some time and we're running um, all of our requests at once. So um, if you've been playing around with Postman, you might be familiar with the collection runner. This allows you to run kind of all of your requests in a row. Um, you know, you're able to check and uncheck any very, any requests. You can reorder them. Um, in this case, we are going to only run this one folder because it's kind of the workflow we've already set up. So you can see we only have these three requests we've been working with. Um, it'll run them in order. And so if I run this, awesome. You can look, we've got six tests that have passed, no failures, exactly what we wanted. Um, but Pooja, I noticed there was something um, new in this. Uh, collection runner window. Do you want to kind of go into what that is? Yeah, totally. So um, there is a, a new feature that is um, that recently came out with version 10 of Postman, which allows you to run your tests using the Postman CLI. So to work with the Postman CLI, um, right now we're here on the runner tab. And just to go back to where we got here, um, if we go to our folder and click on the run, uh, you can see there are different ways to run your collection. So we can run these by clicking on each request manually, or we can run using um, a collection runner. But there's another way, which is uh, run through Postman CLI. So Postman CLI allows you to automate your um, your uh, process. And it's actually a command line tool. Maybe there might be some folks of you that have worked with Postman before and might have seen another command line tool that we have, which is called Newman. Um, Newman is an open source um, command line tool, whereas Postman CLI is a little bit more closed source. And um, it allows you to basically automate your, uh, your um, testing using um, using uh, your API key. And here you can see that you, when you unclick some of these tests, it automatically uh, 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 gives you the request with the right tests. Um, with, po with Newman, you might've had to get that collection run ID yourself. Uh, here with Postman CLI, it gets those IDs for you. So you, you have something to work with directly. You can also add your API key and generate your API key here from scratch. Um, and when you copy this command into your, um, into your terminal, you'll see what that looks like. So to work with CLI, uh, you need to basically download Postman CLI and there's some instructions on how to do that um, when you click on this link. But Carson, can we take a look at what that looks like here? Yeah, so I've already logged in to the Postman CLI using that first command just so I didn't have to do it on the webinar and expose my API key, but this is the um, you know command I've copied over from the previous screen. If we run this, 
see we've got an output very similar to Newman. Um, uh, we've got all of our requests and the, you know, we've got a check if it passed and we'll get a red X if it fails. And you can kind of see a summary here at the bottom. Yeah, so this makes like the whole process of CICD uh, pretty easy, uh, a lot more um, uh, intuitive because you have the, you know, you can basically write your tests within Postman, create your scripts, and then use the CLI to do that automation and that um, continuous integration, continuous sort of deployment um, with your script. So let's take a deeper look at what that looks like. So if we go back to here, um, if I click on run on CICD, I can click on this and configurate that command. So let's say I had some environment variables. So if I was working against prod or test or staging environment, I had very different environment variables. I could set my environments this way. Um, I can configure different um, uh, providers such as um, CircleCI, GitLab, Jenkins. So this allows me to write my tests and then automatically run that automation through any of these providers, um, depending on what that uh, operating system is. So this is a way that you can generate your use Postman CLI to generate um, some of your CICD testing. Um, you can also get a history of your tests here. So if I go back to my topmost folder and take a look at my runs, um, I can see what kind of tests I've run in that, in that time frame. So here um, we, you can see that we ran that Postman CLI test. Um, you can take a look at like just a little bit of the history of what, what ran, what the duration was. Um, you can see that this test was actually run using the collection runner. So um, let's say you have your um, Postman CLI connected to some CI pipeline. Uh, you can see those runs run here um, automatically as well. And you can also take a look at like statuses and things like that. So this is actually a really useful tool when it comes to automation and it allows you to take your testing basically one step further. Um, so basically going from writing your first manual um, script, whether that be your 200 request to creating some sort of custom test, um, testing for custom elements in your response code, um, then to creating an end-to-end -end test, which Carson showed us where we took in one ID from the get get request um, and checked it against a post request, um, collected certain variables there. And then finally to um, running all of your tests using automation. So I hope this, you know, I know we went a little bit fast and, you know, we're trying, we have a very, you know, short amount of time to cover some of these topics, but I hope this kind of gives you a better overview of like the whole process of, of, uh, of testing. And I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into contract testing, and this is going to be um, a pretty brief overview because we've actually had um, our colleague Ian do a really in-depth webinar when it comes to contract testing. So um, I think if anyone could drop that link in the chat of Ian's contract testing webinar. But essentially here, when it comes to contract testing, contract testing allows you to validate your schema. So for example, in this case, if I were to send this request, um, a schema basically lets you kind of validate the various different types of your um, request uh, what your expectation output is here. So here um, I'm, you know, expecting that my title is some sort of string, my author is a string, um, my year published is a number, um, my uh, checked out type is a Boolean. So if I wanted to do some contract validation testing of my schema, I could use this library called AJV. Um, uh, you know, AJV is a very popular library and it's actually built directly into Postman that allows you to do that um, schema validation. So feel free to um, drop that link to AJV as well in the chat for anyone who's interested. But for those of you who might be working with your team that are trying to develop a contract, um, this type of testing is very useful um, 
once once it comes to building out that contract testing. So um, I know we have about 10 minutes left. I think we wanted to do one more brand new thing when it comes to testing, um, and that is gRPC. So Carson, let me, I know we are on a team profile here. So let me go ahead and quickly um, fork into this, um, an example of, uh, a gRPC. Um, so I'm going to fork this into intergalactic testing. And so you should see that my fork is right there. So yeah. The magic of Postman collaboration just automatically appears. So if you've been following Postman's kind of multi-protocol, um, you know, updates, you know that we now have these um, support for gRPC and WebSockets. And now with gRPC specifically, um, we've added scripts for gRPC, which is very exciting. So um, we're not going to dive too deep into this, but just wanted to kind of touch on this in case you are a gRPC developer. Um, so you can see we have one scripts tab here. This houses both your before invoke and after response test sandbox. So this is kind of equivalent to, you know, your pre-request scripts and test tab and kind of the other um, REST response uh, API collection. So um, you can see we've got some tests here. And one really nice thing is that the Postman team has adapted some of the most commonly used test snippets to be specific to gRPC development. So we looked at how in a REST um, API, uh, ideal 200 is like everything is okay, and gRPC the equivalent is the status code of zero. So we've already got those built out for you um, to kind of help you along in your gRPC testing journey. Um, you know, we can invoke this and see, you know, our test results aren't quite all passing. Uh, we've got our response here. I think if we change this to the reply, we've got all of our tests passing. So definitely a fun thing to play around with if you are uh, familiar with gRPC or you just want to learn kind of a new protocol, um, definitely worth looking into. So I think that's yeah. kind of our uh, overview of testing. Anything you want to add before we jump back over to the slides, Pooja? No, I think we went over a lot. So let's um, let's go back and kind of summarize what we've what we kind of went through. Yeah. So just kind of a recap of our learning objectives. We looked at sending requests, inspecting the response, kind of getting the lay of the land on the Postman interface. We used test snippets, you know, in REST and gRPC. We wrote some custom test code. Uh, we extracted data from one request, used it in another. Um, we utilized collection variables for that. We saved and ran requests and tests in collections. We did that with the collection runner and the Postman CLI. And then we kind of looked at the different types of tests that can be written in Postman, you know, from end to end to contract testing. We looked at a few different types there. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the you know, we, we run these sessions quite a bit, but one thing that we do want to talk about that recently came out is the version 10 of Postman. So um, we have a blog here that is actually really useful that we'll take a look at deeper when it comes to um, some of the new features that have come out um, with Postman. So we dove into the CLI, um, we dove into a little bit about gRPC. There's a lot more stuff when it comes to um, native Git support as well. Um, but in terms of testing, you know, there's, you know, we, we have a lot of our basic features that I think most people that have worked with Postman are still familiar with, but now we've kind of enhanced it to be this end-to-end -end tool that allows um, producers of APIs as well as consumers of APIs to collaborate more, more successfully. So um, definitely, if you're interested in some of the more uh, V10 features, definitely take a look, look at that blog and to learn more. Um, and we showcased a couple of them today um, um, for you as well. Um, I think that should be about it. So, you know, thank you all for joining this amazing session. Uh, we've went through so much content. Um, we have lots of different um, things, you know, uh, sessions and, uh, you know, resources for you all. So Postman Intergalactic is a place for you to get that um, deeper insight learning of some of uh, Postman's 
most prominent features. And I'd want to go ahead and share some, some links in the chat, which is you can catch some of our previous sessions. I know if we went a little bit too fast in this session, feel free to watch this replay, which will be available live, um, uh, which you can catch at that first link. Um, we have some other collections in here available for you. And I just posted a bunch of links um, in the chat as well. So uh, you can take a look at those one by one. Um, we also have our community form that lets you, you know, if you have any additional resources, we have some fantastic people in our community that are willing to give you some hands-on, um, in-depth insight of, of some of the issues you might be facing, especially when it comes to your scripts. And then we have a lot more, a lot more examples. So, um, you know, the best way to learn is to look at so many examples. So go ahead, take a look at some examples, fork them into your own workspace and get started with some of this testing um, end to end. So with that said, if you enjoyed the session, we're constantly learning um, and we're always looking for uh, feedback. So feel free to give us some of your feedback. Um, I just posted our survey link. So feel free to take a look at that link and give us some of your feedback. And um, we're happy to you know, send you resources and, um, and tweak these sessions accordingly. So with that, I, I think that's all for me. Um, Carson, any, any words, last words from you? Yeah, no, thank you all for coming. Um, saw we had some great questions in the chat. Do we have mm -hmm. time to answer a couple of those live? Yeah, so we have about, I guess, four minutes left. Um, do we, um, okay, so we have one, one question, I think that is recommendation for training for technical writers. Um, that is tasked with documenting and contextualizing APIs. Uh, any thoughts on, on, on that, Carson, especially on the writing end? I know we do a ton with documentation. So our documentation has now kind of become a really great place for, um, uh, you know, expressing and writing the APIs there. So um, that's actually a good, ex we, you know, that's a good, good topic when it comes to writing good docs and we're happy to share some content with you um if you check out postman blogs and just search for documentation we have tons of resources for technical writers there yeah um, i'd say um our learning center the writing is amazing and um, a lot of great resources and blogs like we just said so much to explore there um I Dean think he asks a uh, test result report. Is there any way to export so we can publish it? Can we get a test result report in HTML format? Yeah. Um, I do know in V10, you are able to kind of link to a specific um, run in the Postman collection runner. And then if you're using Newman, we do have a couple of like HTML reporters. So if you're running it from the command line, you can generate an HTML report um, that you're able to share as a file there. So that's like the HTML reporter extra, I believe. Who mm -hmm. do you have other recommendations on that? Yeah, so I was going to definitely just point out that um, that as well. So uh, Newman is uh, is open source and uh, it, they do have amazing reporters. So that's that's a one definitely a way to to do that. If you're working in a team setting, um, you know, you can get obviously all of these reports that we showed you using the Postman CLI, you can get like the run reports. So um, depending on how many people you're working with, if you're creating API tests internally, it may make, make sense to create a team account and then um, kind of take a look at some reporting that way. Um, so any way to send consolidated test reports that include both pass and fail tests? Uh, any thoughts on that, on consolidating tests, Carson? I believe like some of these HTML reporters will include both pass and failed tests. And, um, you know, there are also several reporters built into Numa and there are third party reporters. You could also, you know, build your own reporter if none of those kind of fit your needs. I think there's like a link to that on the Numa and GitHub um, mm -hmm. page as well. So that's definitely worth looking into if you have kind of a special case there. Yeah. So yeah, some things you might want to just um, search is like Newman uh, reporters or HTML reporters. Um, I think it seems like you all are interested in creating these customized metric tables or customized tables for results. So uh, Newman is definitely the open source route. Um, so definitely just Google that um, Postman Newman H, uh, test reporters. If you want to work more 
closed source with a team with internal APIs, um, you can always look at um, uh, Postman's like professional team plans and kind of get, get some deeper insight there. But yeah, I think that is about it. We're right on time. This was really fun, Carson. Thank you again for collaborating with me. Um, yeah, it's always fun to do these and I appreciate everyone for joining and feel free to reach out to myself. Um, I'm Buja Makes on Twitter and uh, Carson's handle is there too, at Carson. So um, feel three free R's. to, yeah, three R's. Yeah, feel free to connect with us as well. So um, we look forward to, um, you know, sharing resources with you all. Thank you all. Have a good one. Bye-bye.